Hey guys, Mike from Magnanimous here, and we're back live from Studio One for another Build of the Day. Uh, if you guys are new to the series, this is something we're doing every day, Monday through Friday, where we're going live at 5 p.m. Unfortunately, today we we're a little bit behind because I was actually helping a renter set up for a live stream that he's doing later today. So as always, if you guys are interested in streaming, let us know. We have all the gear to accommodate it. Uh, today's build is one that I was really excited about when I first put it together, and it was a uh, requested build by a renter a couple years ago who had a very specific need to uh, take a time-lapse video and blow it up for a massive 16K resolution display, which was a giant LCD display that was gonna be hanging at a sports game. So he came to me wanting to shoot a uh, time-lapse that would be as large of resolution as possible, so we had come up with this build, and it's a side-by-side -side build that's gonna take two different cameras and mount them side-by-side -side so that you can shoot with each of them and then stitch the images together to create a massive resolution. To do that, we're gonna be using the Canon 5 DSR. You could use you know, whichever DSLR that you would like, but ideally you're gonna be using the exact same camera for each setup with the exact same lens because you are going to want them to be as identical as possible. In this case, we're gonna be using the 5 DSR. I choose the 5 DSR because it has a few features that set it aside from other Canon DSLRs, namely its sensor size, features a 50.3 megapixel sensor capable of rendering 8K raw still images, so for time-lapse, you get the utmost amount of quality and resolution. And for today's build, we can take two of those 8K images, stitch them together to create that 16K that we're needing for that large blow-up. And it also has a built-in intervalometer. It was the first camera of its kind to feature that. A lot of other Canon DSLRs have integrated it, the 7D Mark II. I believe the newer 5D Mark IVs also have those but the 5DSR still packs a punch for time-lapse video. If you guys are interested in shooting time-lapse with this camera, it's very easy to set up. I actually have a video that I did a couple years ago about how to set that up, so I recommend checking that out on our website, and that'll walk you through how to do all your menu settings, calculate how long your shutter speed should be and things like that, and setting up all of the live stream, or I'm sorry, the uh, time-lapse. Today's build is really focused on the hardware side of it, lining the cameras up, making sure they're mounted properly, and how to mount all of that to one single tripod. For the lens, I chose a prime lens because we want our cameras to have as identical of a field of view as possible. If the field of view is slightly off, the positioning of a, uh, let's say, a cityscape time lapse, and you're looking at the Sears Tower, uh, the positioning of the Sears Tower, the height of it within the frame, all of that is gonna change as the field of view changes. Wider field of view, it's gonna look slightly smaller, and a tighter field of view, it'll look slightly larger. So that everything lines up perfectly across both of our cameras. We want the focal length, the depth of field, everything to be identical. So we're gonna be using a 24 millimeter prime. You could use a zoom lens, but I recommend parking at a focal length, whichever that may be. Uh, I usually like to take a piece of gaff tape and just run it along my zoom ring so it prevents the lens from zooming. That'll ensure that you don't accidentally switch it or anything. That does bring me to a good point. Currently, we have a really awesome flash discount running. If you haven't had a chance to check out our... is as long as you book within the next eight days, you'll lock in that cheaper rate, even though your shoot may be down the road. So even if you're looking to set something up for after the stay home order and the pandemic and everything blows over, we still have you covered so you can lock in those cheaper rates now. So as soon as you're ready, you can get right back into production. So definitely check that out. Let's go ahead and cut over to our top down camera and we'll go ahead and start connecting our build. As always, we are going to need rails. I purposely have done two 24-inch rails 
They're long enough, it's almost hard to get them into the frame. And that's so that we have ample amount of room to set the positioning of our cameras. To attach the rails to our tripod, I've taken the good old Red Rock Universal Quick Release System, but I've strimmed it down. I've taken the Quick Release platform off, and it is just going to be a rod clamp, and it has mounting points for our tripod plate, which is really all we need for this particular setup. So we're just going to take our tripod plate and go ahead and mount him on. And then I'm just going to preemptively take my rods and run them through so that they are kind of equidistant along the quick release plate. And then we'll cut back over to our tripod. That's really most of all the buildup. Uh, everything else is just connecting cameras. We'll go ahead and throw it on, and you'll notice we have our rods. Now, traditionally, you would point this towards the subject that you want to shoot, and you would mount your camera in the direction of the rods. We're actually going to go against that today. So I'm going to turn my tripod so that it is parallel to the subject that I want to shoot and we can lock that in place. We have here what's called a Red Rock uh, DSLR base plate. It is a small platform with a single quarter 20 mounting screw, and it has a rod clamp so that I can very easily attach it to my rods, tighten it down, and then I can also slide it along my rods to establish the exact position that I want. And we're gonna use this to attach the camera to the rods. So we can lock both of these down in a just kind of rough positioning with where we think we're going to want those to be. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pop one battery in one camera. And normally you would lock it down in that orientation, but we are going to purposely cheat our camera to the right like so and tighten it down in the same orientation as our rods. The nice thing about this is when you're trying to stitch together video, you want to be able to adjust your cameras slightly at an angle. Because if we have them perfectly like this, there's going to be overlap in what my cameras are seeing. And so we want to be able to angle them slightly out. With the DSLR base plates, they allow you to set that angle yourself very, very easily on the fly so that you can make it so that the edge of your frame barely overlaps so you lose as little resolution as possible because every point that the frame overlaps is resolution that's going to get spliced together and won't be a part of the total resolution of the frame. And then we'll go ahead and throw our lenses on. like so. And I have a 60 gi 64 gig CF card for both my cameras. Now, the 5DSR, while it has the highest resolution you can possibly get out of a Canon DSLR, uh, it does eat media very, very quickly, especially for time lapse, because you're talking every second of video makes a, is made up of 24 individual photos. And each of those photos is an 8K raw still image, which packs a lot of data into that. So one 64 gig card will give you approximately 980 shots in just raw. So make sure you plan accordingly with your media. If you watch that 5DSR time lapse video, I talk about it extensively in there on how to calculate the exact media needs that you'll have for your given time lapse. Uh, but just bear that in mind that you're going to want enough media to support everything. Uh, if you set your interval, interval uh, well enough, you actually have some time where you could pull a card, put a new one in, in between when those shots would need to happen. Uh, but 
because of the internal intervalometer, this is really all the setup has to be. No extra cables hanging off, no need for anything else. The intervalometer is built straight in. Most other DSLRs would require some other form of a timer remote to plug into the camera, which would tell it when to take a picture. But since we have that built in, we don't need it. I can go ahead and pop these on, and I'm just going to slide them along and position them so that I have my desired framing and their overlap as little as I can. The same exact setup could go for any mirrorless or DSLR camera, or really any video camera that's under five pounds, uh, just because the rods and this DSLR base plate are only going to be able to support so much weight. Uh, you don't want to overload it with too much. So having a light body, uh, but you could still put a video camera or something like that as long as it was, as it was lightweight enough. But if you wanted to use the 5D Mark IV or you wanted to use uh, the newer A7R4 that we've showed to shoot really high 10K resolution, you definitely could. It's very, very adaptable. Uh, but yeah, this has been the side-by-side -side build. Very, very simple but effective for massive high resolution shooting so that you can take two 8K images and stitch them together to create one 16K image. Very, very useful. And then, as I, as I said before, but just to stress it, if you're ever wanting to do this setup, just make sure that you have identical cameras, identical lenses, and identical settings. So you'll want to run everything in manual. If you were to run it in auto or aperture priority or something like that, it's possible that a light hitting one camera could cause its settings to change separately from the other. So you want to make sure everything's in sync, everything lines up, so that everything matches once you get to post-production. But uh, yeah, this would be all you need to easily and quickly set up for that. Let's see if you guys had any questions about this build. No questions yet, but if you guys have any, comment below. We can answer those down the road. Uh, as always, if you're looking to stream, we have all the gear that you need to stream. Uh, not only can we hook you up with the gear, but our partners over at PerfectCircle.pro can hook you up not only with the gear, but an operator. So they can come out on site to help you figure out your stream so that you don't have to worry about the hassle of software and signal flow and all of that. You can focus on the creative side and we'll take care of the hassle. So if you guys are interested in that or have been intimidated in how to start a stream, please reach out. We're happy to help. That's PerfectCircle.pro. And then uh, just to recap what we had talked about at the beginning, we have a bunch of gear right now that is on sale. Uh, not only the 5DSR, but some of our RED cameras, a lot of the new cameras and lenses that we've highlighted in a lot of these live builds are on there right now for a heavily reduced price. So if you guys are interested in checking those out, go to magrents.com. And right there on the landing page, you'll see all of our items that are on flash discount. It's running for the next eight days, so you guys can book any of those items for any time period. As long as you book within the end of that eight days, you'll lock in that cheaper rate. So if you guys are interested in trying the gear out that we've been showing, definitely take advantage of that, because it's probably going to get you the best deal you can. Uh, as always, guys, it's been a pleasure. This has been the side-by-side -side build with the five DSRs. If you guys have any requested builds that you want to see, comment below and let me know, and we'll highlight the gear that you guys are interested in. Uh, I'll plan to see you guys tomorrow at 5 p.m. for another build of the day. And as always, take care.